Hello and welcome. This is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And in this week's unique training, we're going to be creating an amazing user friendly dynamic filters in which you have probably never seen in Excel before. It's going to be one of the best trainings on filters. I can't wait. So let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining us today. Today we're gonna to be creating a really amazing user-friendly filter, dynamic filters using advanced filter, using one of the most creative ways to use filters, extremely user-friendly. This can be done in any version of Excel and it can be sent and used by any type of person regardless of the skill level that they have in Excel. In fact, often we're able to create certain filters as developers and Excel enthusiasts, but what happens when we send that workbook to others and they don't necessarily have that Excel skill level, how do they create the filters? In this week's training, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that so that you can create and send your workbook to any user, regardless of their level of skill, and they'll be able to use it right away, creating any kind of type filters, multiple filters, multiple criteria. It's going to be a really great training. We've got so much to get covered. So we're going to get started right away. Just so you know, if you do like these videos, I create them each and every Tuesday. So do make sure you subscribe and click that notifications bell. That's going to help you get alerted right when I create these new videos. So you will not miss an episode. If you want this application, just like every week, I'll include the link in the description below. So make sure you pick it up. It's absolutely free. But if if you do want to support this channel and my videos each and every week I do have a 150 workbook pack all in a single zip file those are my best 150 workbooks I've spent years creating and it's all for you for just $56 that's the current price on that it may go up that's just 37 cents a workbook so that's gonna really help us out so I do hope you pick that up let's get started on this training I've got so much to cover so what do I want to do here well basically what I want to do is I want to create a drop-down list of perhaps a filter by you know filter all the fields I've got some data here already set up so I've got I want to be able to filter based on an ID a company name an email first name last name country or even total sales are started on and I want to create multiple filters so that users can simply just click on a filter edit it close it out add a filter I just want to make it really really user friendly I want to make it kind of like the filters we have on websites when we're booking rooms or something like that where you could just click and it's really completely simple for a user that's what I want to get out of in here in Excel today that's what I want to show you to see how you can create those types of filters and then regardless of Excel now we have slices and lots of great things in advanced version of Excel but what about if you send this to a, someone who has a Excel version 2007 or 2003 what do we do then in this training I'm going to show you a method how you can create almost any version of Excel with some basic VBA and some basic shapes so it's going to be really great it can be used on any version of Excel and also we have different filter types notice that these are all text this is a number and this is a date so we're going to be able to do multiple types of filter based on dates or based on text so it's really really great going to be a great training and so I have this data I've also got some named ranges and I want to set the filter I've got some information here so we have a filter option table now for example if it's a text type of filter I want to give the user the ability to says equals text contains or does not contain and then I have some associated filter these are going to be used for our criteria so what we're going to do is we're going to use this formula except we're going to replace the word value with whatever the user has typed in and if if it's a number type filter for example if a number type would be this one like total sales I want the drop down list to include this so that the user can choose from these options is less than less than equal to greater than I want to give them all those type options Options. and if it's a date I want to give them this type of a drop-down list and uh, is before or after and this type of a filter so we have three different text number and date each one of those comes with its own drop-down list so we've got a data validation and also each one of those comes with its own format so I want to format because the user is going to be using the same cell so that format is going to be the cell the general format which is this a symbol or at symbol I should say and the number filter would have just this type of format and the date now feel free to change these formats as you wish all you need to change them in here and it'll change on your own application as well so the idea is for a user to probably select 
and let's say here they'll select which one which field a drop down list of all the fields then what we want to do is like is less than or is greater than here and then their value is going to go here and then they're going to click a button and add the filter so that's what I want to create. We're going to have some information here, and then we're going to have a table down here. That table is going to show all the results of their filter. Well, they'll be able to click on a shape and edit that uh, filter, or they'll be able to click on the X and it'll close it. That's what I'm going to build. I'm going to build it right in front of you. We're going to write every line of code. I just have a little bit of formatting because it's kind of boring to watch me format these cells. Other than that, I've got a few named ranges. Let's just go over just the four named ranges. So I've got the customer header. If we tab over here, we're going to see that those uh, customer database just called customer header it is all that it's just the ID all to the started on every header we're gonna that's gonna help us in some of our formulas because I need to determine what type of field it is is it a text is it a number or is it a date and then what I have is three different named ranges if we tab over here all we see we have a date range but this is just on or before so this is they're going to be selection so for example when they select a date type field i want to give them these options when they select a number type field i want to give them these options and when we select a text item i want to give them these options so those are just the four named ranges that i've created that's going to help us in a formula and i've just got a little bit of a jump start on this everything else there's no code in this workbook so far we're going to write all the code no macros nothing here we're going to write everything in front of you and hopefully we can get it done in an hour that's what i'm shooting for not sure hopefully the formatting helped us out i always try to get an hour but let's see how that goes i really appreciate you sticking with me on these i love to show you how to build these amazing applications so that you can not only get freelance job but create your own applications and sell them that's exactly what i'm doing in my mentorship program if you want to take a look at that www.myexcelmentor.com will show you how you can create your own applications and sell them on the market. So I hope you join us there. All right, so what do I want to do? So I want to create at least a, a filter here, props in G2. So what I want to say is filter by. So I want to give the user the option to filter by. Now, what are we going to create? We're going to create at least three fields. So I'm going to call these in white. And those are the entry fields that I want the user to basically enter their fields on and I'm going to uh, basically put borders around all of these so I'm going to format those cells we'll just use a dark blue uh, border basically a basic color something like uh, same as our theme here so we'll uh, put an outline around that and so I want the user to enter a drop down list here basically is going to be those headers so what do I want to do there I want to put a let's just take a look at this one here I'm going to use the customer header that's what's going to be our drop down list so I want them to select between any one of those headers so we're going to use the data validation for that field so I'll just go into data data validation and then create a new data out it's going to be a list type of field so let's go ahead and put in list and it's going to be equal customer headers that's what I want the user to choose from so that's what I want to customer header here not headers that's what I want the user to choose from so we got to be able to give them the option to choose one of those fields so once they choose a company name or any one of those fields I want to let's increase the font a little bit here perhaps something like uh, 12 or something just a little bit bigger so once they select company name I want a dynamic drop down list here so what is that drop down that drop down list is going to based on whether it's a text if it's going to be equals less than if it's a text field if it's a number field i want these to be the options and if it's date these to be options so how do we do that well we need to know what this is so let's fill in some information here i need to know what type this is so let's fill in some information here things that we're going to need so we need to know the header type that's important what is the header type and i'm going to put that information right here let's color let's say these three uh, just give it some different color these are going to be hidden right when you have your application you just hide these fields and it's very simple you would be these first in this case our first four that's a little bit too dark can't read the writing on there so we'll color this just a light green so i want the header type here and then here i want the filter format filter format i want to know what format we should have and i want some filter detail what is the filter detail that's going to be basically this information here so once they select it i want to know what filter was it this one this one or this one because we need to put that as our criteria remember we're going to replace it so if they choose less than is greater than i'm going to have this appear in our criteria our criteria is going to be a dynamic criteria it's going to go right here 
Then based on this criteria, we're gonna have our results show up right in here. Then I'm gonna take the results, whatever show up here, I'm gonna bring them right back into here and I'm gonna put them in a table right here. Let's write that out, let's put that table. I've got a merchant center here already to make things a little bit easier, customer list. And then all it's gonna be is just the same data. So we can just copy this here. It's gonna be no different than this here. And I'm gonna have our results appear right in this. So I'm gonna paste the values here. That's what we're going to show. That's what I want to show. So let's just put some borders around there and then some basic so we can get an idea of exactly what we're going to be doing. We want the results to appear here. So that way we have dynamic results no matter what we are doing. It's always going to show up right in the fields there. And then I'll just give this a little bit of a format, something with our theme here. I'm trying to do a little bit less formatting because uh, those who've been following us understand the formats are, are kind of basic. And we want to put the focus on the filtering part of it, not necessarily the format because it does take a little bit of extra time and I try to keep these as lo low as possible as far as time but usually they're around an hour or longer one of the weeks was three hours long that was way too long so keeping them down so sometimes putting in a little bit of information helps all right so I've just formatted these just given some basic formats for this table and I believe I have some conditional formatting let's just check I did add some earlier okay I've got some conditional formatting already here so it's basically what we're going to do is color the odd and even rows based on data you can download this and check it out but we're not going to focus on conditional formatting basically odd and even rows so all we do is as soon as we add data here it's going to format those so I just added those already Ready. So you can see as soon as we bring in the data, those formats based on the odd or even row are going to show up white or very light blue. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to know what header type this is. If it's company name, it's going to be text. If it's total sales, it's going to be number. If it's started on, that's a date field. I need a date, so I want to put that right here. How do we do that? Well, we can use a formula. It's going to be really simple. All we need to do is just use an indirect formula. So how do we do that? Well, let's just take a look. Equals indirect indirect and then what is it we're going to use the data I want to use data remember focused on the data here data sheet and we're going to do row what is the row in our data sheet two why are we doing row two and then column row two column and I'll show you that in a second and what we're gonna do is the match so I'm gonna use the r1c1 format on indirect and what I want to do is I want to match whatever they've put on here so we're going to match What's an A2, H2, I should say, H2. That's what I want to match. And I want to base it on the named range customer header. And I want an exact match. Okay, so that is going to get us our column. In this case, I want our column. And since this is R1C1, that would be false. Okay, and this should be data. Okay, let's take a look at that. All right, that's exactly what I want. When started on, I want a date. When total sales, I want this to be number. And when it's any other thing, I don't want it to be text. That's exactly what I want. I also want to wrap this around if error. Just in case there's an error, I'm going to wrap that and then put a blanks if there's an error. Okay, so now that I have the, the header type, now that I have the header type, I want to place that header type right here in a dynamic drop-down list. So as soon as we change this, the drop-down list is going to change. And I also want to know the format. How are we going to get the filter format? What do I want by filter? I want to know, is it going to be this at sign? Is it going to be the number? Or is it going to be the date? Now, we can use that. All we need to do is just type using another indirect to determine that. So let's write that now. The filter format would be equals indirect, indirect filters. Okay, we're focused on the filters sheet in this case, and it's also going to be R1, and we're focused on row. What is the row? That's going to be row 11. That's where our filters are located. But what is the column? The column's dynamic. It's going to be based on the match formula. So it's going to be and, right? We need to match up. I want to match the header type, right? So we're going to, I'm going to look up this value, and what is the array that I'm going to look up? I'm going to look it up right here. I'm going to look it up right here, all the way here. I'm looking for a match. And so, but but this would return column one if it's found here. But I really don't want column one. I want column 17. So how are we going to get that? We just need to add 17. So the first thing I want to do is I want an exact match. So comma zero, that's going to get us an exact plus 16, plus 16. That is going to get us the exact column we want. And this is going to be also R1C1, so it is false. All right, let's take a look at that. That's what I want. The 
add sign there if it's text if i change this to total sales it should go to number and if i change this to start it on it should go to date that's what i want i also want to wrap this on if error as well so let's add that in and just in case there's an error we're going to put in double quotes that's going to be blank okay great so what do i want when they change started on i want this to change to the date drop down list remember we have named ranges we've got a text named range here drop down list we've got number and we've got date so i want this drop down list to be dynamic a dynamic data validation i'm going to place that right here in i2 when do i want that to change i want that to change as soon as i make a change to h2 so we can do that with vba so let's go into that we can go into the developers and then visual basic or alt f11 will get you there and let's write some code this is of course going to be a worksheet event it's not going to be selection change we're going to be focused on an actual change and what is that change that change is based on h2 so i'm going to type some code i type that out automatically using auto hotkey Auto hotkey is going to be able to automate. You can download that for free. That's what I use. So we're going to focus on I2. We want to make sure that D1 is not empty. If D1 is not empty, take the data validation and place it in I2. So how can we do that? Well, first of all, let's make sure and range D1 dot dot value does not equal empty. As long as those two conditions are met, then we can do something. We can add that data validation in. Then add that data validation. First thing we want to do, of course, is delete the validation. We can't add any validation in any cell unless it's, we got to make sure it's already deleted just in case. So range I2 is the one we're focused on. I2 dot validation dot delete. That's going to remove, remove any existing validation. Now we're ready to add it. Once we've removed it, we can add another one. So how do we do that? Range, this should be I2, not L2, I2. Again, I2, this time we're gonna add a validation. So we can just copy that, paste it down here. This time it's validation.add. So we're adding a validation. And what type of validation? It's gonna be a list, right? We want a drop down list, so let's write list. And then again, alert style, that's an optional. We don't need that operator, that's also optional. Formula, now we do need a formula. What is the formula? It's gonna be equals, and we also wanna know equals what? Equals whatever is in D1. So range D1 dot value, whatever, that is our validation, okay? Right, so again, let's just take a look at that and see what we have here started on now if i change this to total sales i want this to be based on is less than now it works so what if i want to change it to a date if i started on it's going to be date now the date validation is going to be and again text is company name that's great so what if i put one one here i want this to become a date right i want to change the format of j2 based on that so if it's a date right if it's total sales i want this to be number if it's uh started on i want this to be date so i want to not i want to change the format of j2 so how can i do that well i can use this format that's right here into d2 so we can do that with just one line of code so let's do that range j2 we're focused on j2 now dot number format equals whatever's in d2 range d2 dot value Good, okay, but I also wanna do a few things. When a user makes a change to H2, I really wanna clear out I2 and J2. I wanna clear it out because they'll have to put in new values. So we can do that just with this line of code. Range, again, I2 through, you could use comma as well, it's only to J2 dot clear, dot clear contents. You don't wanna use clear because that will clear out all the formats we just want to clear the contents clear contents okay great so let's just take a look at that and see how that works that's a good part of our let's say we have honor before let's say 11 1 okay and now let's change this to start it on let's just double click that it clears it out right and now when we have honor after and now when we type in 11 1 it's going to be format as a date that's exactly what i want but if we change it to total sales and then we change it to something less than or equal to one, that's perfect, that's a number format. And then if I change the text format, 
it's going to be does not equal and then it'll just be even if i put in one one it's going to be treated as a text that's what i want that's what i want okay great so that's all we really need to do as far as these concerned that's it that's for our code perfect but we need to add some buttons so let's what kind of buttons are we going to be adding it's just about three buttons i want to be able to add a filter i want to be able to update a filter and i want to be able to clear all the filters so let's add that and let's add some icons so i'm going to insert pictures here and i've got some uh, pictures saved up here and let's just take a look here in the dynamic filters pretty much what we're going to need is just these four so let's insert that and then uh, we'll make them all just around like 0.23 or something we will adjust the sizes this one i'm going to duplicate and use Control d and use one as our icon up here and then i'll use one in the clear filter we'll use this a few times because i want to clear the filter update the filter and we're going to create our button sets and we're going to create our filter button so let's do that insert shapes and we'll first we'll just create our, our buttons first here for this and then we'll add our shapes because that'll probably come first so let's give it a format of this generally just a format of buttons and i want to add a filter so let's add filter and then i'm going to right justify that and center it so we'll go into the home center in the mid middle and then right justify it and then i'm going to put the icon here so i'm going to we're going to need this filter a few different times duplicate that and i uh, also want to move this so we'll use this for add a filter but this icon's too big and we'll put this here i'm going to zoom in and we need to bring it to the front it's behind the button now so we'll just go ahead and bring four bring to the front and I'm going to do the same thing with this. In fact, I'm going to bring them all to the front, holding the control down, bring them all to the front. And uh, we'll probably have to do that a few times. So the add a filter, we're going to use this, but it's too big for that. So we'll drop that down to 0.17 or something like that. And maybe 0.16. Okay, so that's good. So now we've got our add filter button pretty much here. And I want to update. So that's for adding a brand new filter. But what about if we just want to update an existing one? That's going to be a new button. So let's do that. I'm going to use this for the update and use this icon. So let's just duplicate that. Control D. And then I also want to clear the filters. Control D again. We can send these two to the back because all of our icons are going to be uh, behind or above that. So we can send it to the back that's fine and then so this one's going to be clear the filter we want to clear in case we want to clear all the filters clear filter and i'm going to use this icon this x icon to clear the filter they're all going to contain this here and then i can bring that i can re reduce the size of this clear the filter that looks good that's what i want that's enough for our clear filter button i'm going to con hold down control selecting all the icons and i'm going to group this and i'm going to call this clear filter button naming is very important although this one's not going to be hidden and then i want the add filter button and we're going to make this update filter so update filter that's what i want and i'll place this icon right here and then this icon right on top so that's just going to update it that's what i want to make this a little bit bigger just so it's consistent and then i'm again control holding the control looking for the plus and then holding then i'm ready to group it and we'll call this update filter button and i'm going to call this add filter button pretty simple pretty standard holding down the control again grouping them naming them group and name add filter button okay so we've got everything now the update and the add filter both of those are never going to be shown at the same time so we can put those right on top of each other and then what i'll do is i'll just use my selection tool and then i'm going to put all of these directly in line i'm going to line them up right here all right now they're all lined up in the middle that's what i want all right good so we've got our button sets and let's reduce that a little bit and we can go out of the selection zoom out a little bit now there's some other buttons that i'm going to need and those are the filter ones those are the dynamics so why don't we create those now i'm just going to insert a shape and we'll use this uh, again rounded but this time we're going to do it a little bit different i'm just going to color this one just a basic shape we don't want an outline just give it a basic color like this color and we'll give it a shape fill let's just say this fill and then shape outline of the same color so that way but this one i want to round it so i'm going to look i'm going to use the rounded i'm going to go completely around it so i'm going to bring it all the way over here like that and i don't think this one's going to be too big so we'll probably focus this one about right about point two two i think that should be good just the height is 0.22 
and uh, the the horizontal the width of it's going to be dynamic based on the text so that should be fine there that looks good depending upon how much text is in it's going to change all right so what else do i want to do actually i want to create another button so i'm going to duplicate this and i want to close button so how do we do that i'm just going to make this perfectly round in this case so it's going to the same width and height and then i'm going to add a clue i'm going to add an x so i'm going to use a capital x there but i also want this obviously centered and there so i also make it bold too i want to i want to make it bold so this is going to be our you're going to be used this for our clothes so the, basically the idea is that this is going to go on top of this like here and then the text is going to go in if they want to close it they're just going to click this button so let's i want to name these two these are going to be our samples so let's bring this here and bring this here and then i want to give we're going to call this uh i'm going to call it sample clear because I want to clear that filter and what about the other one I'm gonna call this sample filter so we have sample clear and sample filter that's gonna help us because I'm gonna use that for each one of my filters right so they're gonna go all of our filters so if we have multiple filters they are all gonna go in this area right here so we can create multiple ones so now we have sample filters sample close great I also want to know the filter detail what do I mean by that when they select contains I don't want the word contains here I want the actual detail I want to put this filter detail or this filter detail or this filter detail now we can use both of the information whatever they've selected here and based on the filter number here based on whether it's text and based on whether it's here to determine this so how do we do that well again we can use indirect there it's going to be a little bit bigger of a formula so let's write this out and then i'll explain it so it's going to be equals indirect and then what I want to do, it's going to also going to be R1C1. So the row is going to be dynamic and so is the column. So the row is matching. We're going to match whatever is in I2. So I2 is going to be the match. But I also want to use indirect. So now how do we get the column? So again, let's continue on. I'm going to use another indirect. Indirect even more because I need to focus on the entire range. So R again indirect r five right why five why row five because that's the beginning of our range row five is the beginning row 10 is the end so we're going to look for between a range between five and between 10 so let's write that's the first part r5 column and match what am i going to match d1 remember we're focused on d1 i want to match and where are we looking d1 let's just take a look d1 is already have our tech but i want to match that i'm looking again for the match between q4 and v4 here q4 and v4 look at that we want an exact match exact also again i want to i want the column number in this case i'm looking for the column again so we have to add 16 because we want the actual column number so once we have that and what else do we need and i want to continue again through i'm looking through we started on row five but it's all the way through row 10 5 through 10 that's what we're looking at so it's going to be and colon r 10 right 5 through 10 column again and we're going to, we're going to use the same column right so row 10 row again row 5 column is dynamic through row 10 again column is going to be the same thing we're using the same same column right and make sure we add and the match again we're using the same match again same plus 16 and again there we go that's the range and of course this is going to be false r1 c1 style so we have that plus what else do we need we want to add more plus four why are we adding four because i need the row Again, so we're adding so we're adding this we don't want to add the four onto that we need the exact row plus four what else and the column what is the column column is also the match now we got the column again matching again matching once again d1 looking for that d1 again all the way through this is going to help us getting that match again this is going to be a big formula i want an exact match so again doing that plus 16 one more time one more time and then plus one we're going to plus one i'll explain that to you in a minute come again false plus 16 plus 16 remember we want the column we're going to start plus 16 in this case plus one why are we plusing one plus 
one, right? Why do we plus one? We want a 16, but I don't want this, right? I want this, the filter. That's why we have to add one. We don't want this. We want one additional one because we want the filter. So plus 16, plus one, false. Again, it's R1, C1 style. Okay, let's take a look at that. All right, that's gonna give us what we want. That's exactly what I want, the header type. And notice there's an apostrophe before it. That's gonna help keep it a text for now until we can get it into the validation. That's what I want. Again, I'm gonna wrap this also around if error, and I'll explain this formula a little bit more in a second. I wanna wrap this on just in case there's an error. Okay, good, so what do we have here? So what I'm doing is I'm basically looking up here indirect, I'm looking up, fine. I'm looking up based on the value here, two lookups. Here's gonna tell us our column, this is gonna tell us our row, and then I'm gonna do plus one, it's gonna get us the value. So based on whatever the user chooses here, we are going to get a filter detail right here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this inside here, inside one of these criteria. And of course, I'm gonna change value with whatever the user has placed here. And I'm gonna walk you through those steps, but those are really important. So we need these three components. We need the text for the header type. I need the format to place that here. And I also need the filter detail. Okay, that's it for the complex formulas. So everything else is pretty much just a little bit of VBA. I'm gonna walk you through those macros. Let's fill out some of the other information here. What do we really want? I want some information, filter. I wanna know the filter shape row because we're gonna put these rows down here. In fact, here in six, I wanna know, I wanna keep track of all of the filters that have been created. So we're gonna put the filter number here. So that means as we create filters, filter number here. So that means as we create filters, it's gonna be one filter, two. So they're gonna be tracked down here. And I also want to know the field, right? What is the field here? Is it customer email? Is it company name? Is it uh, first name? What is the field? And I wanna know the type. Again, again, I wanna make sure we know what is the filter type. And the last thing, I wanna know the value that they've entered. So all of these are really important. So let's just go ahead and color those and then put some borders around them. So I wanna keep track of all of that here. So as the user adds filters, they're all gonna be kept here. And then when they clear the filters, we're gonna clear this section here. So that's gonna tr track that. And I also want to know what row have we selected so if they select a specific filter I want to know which one they've selected so we need that here so let's put that up in here so I want to know the selective shape row the shape row we're gonna put that here I want to know the last filter right what is the last filter there what's the last one and then I want to know the next filter just in case so we keep track of each one one by one and then the selected filter and selected filter number what do i mean by the selected if there's a filter here and they select it i want to know which one they're selected one two or three so that way we can track i'm going to load all the filter details and the one they select they can easily make changes to that filter and then click the update all right so what do we need to do let's color those so we see them separately and differently so that they're, they're unique okay so now that we've colored these rows so what do i want for that well there's a few things that i want there's only really a little bit of formula here in this one, we're gonna use this max. So I've got filter. So what I wanna know is the maximum here. I wanna know the last filter that's, that's just the max. So again, let's do that equals the max of what? We don't need a named range here. So we're just gonna, gonna go all the way down. There's gonna be not that many filters. What is the max there? I wanna know, that's all I wanna know. I wanna know the last filter. In this case, it's three. But I also wanna know the next filter. What would be the next? It would be the same as this plus one. So let's just copy that bring it down here so the next one in this case would be four so plus one now we have the next so we know which one is going to be the next and of course if all of these go are clear this would the next would be this would change to one and then the selected filter number this will be from vba if they select a filter whatever they've selected here will be put here all right great so we're, now we're, we're getting ready we've got a lot covered here and we're ready to continue on with our macro. So let's just update that accordingly. Now we're ready to write some macros so that we can get this functional. Let's just add a little bit of shadow to this so that way the filters, when they bounce off. So what do I really want to do? Well, what I'm gonna to try to do basically in this one is when a user adds a filter, I wanna put whatever text filter by company name does not equal this. I wanna put that text right in here. And I want to, and basically I'm going to duplicate this sample shape. I'm going to like, let's, let's do a sample. What I want is I want it to say company name does not equal 
D, 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 something like that. And then I want to stretch this over here like that. And then, of course, we've got to center that here and left. In fact, I'm going to do the same thing with this one, center it and left. That's what I want, centered and left. Then what I want to do is I want to duplicate this through VBA. I want to put that right about like this and then bring it up. So that's what I want. I want the filter to look like that. So then when they select this filter, all the details go in here. And I want this shape to automatically be as wide or as narrow as the text. So I want all the text to fit in here. So the width of this shape is going to be dynamic based on all the text. And then, so when the user clicks X, it's going to clear the filter and clear all the filter here. Or when they click the shape itself, it's going to actually fill in all the details here it's gonna be really great I can't wait so let's get started so that's what I want that's what I want to happen there so how do we do that well we can use just a little bit of VBA to do that we can write some macros so the first thing we want to do is write some macros that's gonna add some variables so we can do that so let's go into the VBA and start writing some macros I'm gonna put everything basically on this particular thing I want to add a little bit more code on this on sheet just to make sure if the user makes a change to any of the fields any of these fields h2 i2 or j2 i want to make sure that the add filter button is visible in the case that they want to add the visible so let's do that and i want to make sure if b4 is empty b4 is the selected filter so if they select an existing filter i want the filter number that they go the filter one two three i want that to be put in b4 but let's just say b4 is not empty that means there's no existing filter if they make a change here i want to make sure that the add filter button that's the button behind this right when we go to format and we send this to the back right we're gonna see the add filter I want to make sure this add filter button is visible add filter button so let's do that right now let's just write some code because that's all we really need to do and that's gonna be on change so if not what are we changing we're focused on again h2 through j2 so h2 through j2 is nothing that means they've made a change and one more thing I want to make sure that b4 is empty and range b for dot value equals mp that means it's going to be new then what do i want to do then again i just want to make sure that shapes add filter button dot visible equals true just want to make sure that that's visible we could probably hide the update button but that's okay for now so that's all I really want to do on the sheet. That's it for our on sheet code. Nothing else we're really going to need to add here. Maybe we'll add some more, but I think that's going to be it. We don't need to do. Okay, so I'm going to put all of our macros in here. And what I want to do is I want to make sure to dimension all of the variables and hope I don't forget any of them because there's a, quite a number. And then I'm going to use these variables throughout all the macros in there. So the first thing we want to do is dimension the filter name. That's going to be as a string. I want to know that filter name as a string. So what else do we want? I want to know the clear name as a string. We're going to use that, the clear name as a string. And then also I want to know the filter text. Uh, that's the text that's going to go inside that filter button as a string also. These are going to be all string variables. And also, again, I want the clear text. Clear text, we need that as string. And then the last filter as a string. So this is it for the string variable. Last filter as string okay that's it for our string dimensions now we have some ones that are long so let's focus on that dimension i want to know also the selected filter row remember that's important selected filter row as long it's going to be the row that they select so we know and also the filter row in case we need to loop through those filters when we're clearing a filter row as long and also the last filter remember the last filter if we're going to loop through them we need to know the last one filter row as long what do i mean by that well again we want to focus if we have five different filters i want to loop through all these filters so i need to know the last one and i need to know the first one we need to loop through them maybe when we clear them out we're going to run through all those so we need that that's all very very important also i wanted to mention the filter number as long or it could be one that's important we want to know the filter number that we're on and then the last filter number as long okay so what else do we need i want to get also i want to set we need to set the position of these filters the left position top position so to mention the left position as long and the top position top position as long and also i want to know the add if we're adding a filter i want to know what row that is so add filter row as long 
And also, again, dimension the last data row. When we run our advanced filter, I need to know the last row of our data, last data row as long, and also the last, last result row row as long. Okay, so that's it. So the last data row and the last results row. Again, that's important because when we're filtering on our data sheet, I need to know the last row. In this case, it's 103. So we need to run our advanced filter. And also when we get our results, I need to know the last row of the results so that I can bring those results over into this filter here. Okay, great. It's coming along just fine now. Now we're ready to write a macro. So what kind of macro? First thing I want to do is I want to be able to add a filter. If I click add a filter, I want to, I want this filter, I want to click add a filter and I want that filter to be added right away. So how can we do that? Well, we can just write a little bit of a macro to do that. So let's write that now. Sub add filter. And we're focused on which sheet one. So let's uh, write that out with sheet one. And the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the necessary fields, we want to make sure that I2, H2, J2 are all not empty. So let's write that if dot range h2 dot value equals empty or what else or j2 or i2 so let's put that let's just copy that and then make those changes or j2 or i2 then okay then okay so now we just need to update this h2 i2 or j2 if any of those are empty we can't add the filter so we need to let the user know to please add the required fields so message box Please make sure to fill in all fields. Okay, exit sub. Nothing we can do if they haven't added those details. So that's really important. What else? Okay, so now what we can do is we can sign to some of those variables we created. And then let's just drop this down here so we can see a little bit on the screen and see what's going on. Uh, that's going to be helpful for us. Let's reduce this because we need to see some of the things that are going on the screen as well. Okay, so we... I still want to reduce it a little bit more bring it down here actually I can bring it across here so we can see everything okay that's better I like that better what do we want to do I want to do the filter number is going to be what's in b3 filter number equals dot range b3 that's our filter number the selected filter number we need to know what filter number is that's going to be the next filter number right because it's the first available one if there's no filters that are existing that'll be one so B3 is going to take care of that for us. Filter number. Everything has a number. Everything must be tracked. Next, I want to track the filter name. What is the name of that filter? Filter. This should be filter. I want to make sure to get these variables right. Filter name. What's our filter name going to be? It is going to be, we're going to give it a specific name equals the word filter and the number and the filter number. Okay, so that's what it's going to be. So it's going to be filter name. That's the name we're going to assign to the button. I also want the clear name, right? Remember, this is the filter. We need to assign a name to this, and I need to assign a name to this. So we need to do that, and I need to give it specific names so that way we can remove them very clearly. So we can do that. The clear name is going to be also very simple. Clear and the filter number. Filter number. Okay, so now we will be able to give those shapes very specific names. Clear, we'll just call it clear name. Okay, but what about the text? What text do we want here? Basically, I want this, this, and this. I want that text, remember, to be in that. We're going to duplicate that button and place the text inside this. So let's set the text now. Filter text is going to be equal to dot range h2, as you can imagine, and what else? And the space and a space and what else obviously j2 so or i2 so dot range i2 and another space but i'll probably put a colon there and space and in this case colon right because it's part of it that's not equal put and then a space and then the last one which would be j2 dot range j2 okay so now we have the filter text so basically it's going to say company name does not equal ddd or whatever something whatever it is in this case so we have all that we have the filter text and that's going to be placed inside okay so we'll call this the filter field type and value 
Okay, excellent. So now we have the text that's going to, now what we want to do is we want to set the filter row. I need to know what row that's going to go into. So how do we do that? Well, the filter row is going to be located in B1, right? This is going to be, I'm going to put that right here in B1. So let's set that up right now. Okay, so that should be set filter row is going to be equal to B1. Set filter row, I've changed it to set. Set filter row equals dot range B1. B1 is gonna be our filter row, now we know. We'll call this filter row, wanna know the row. What, what's after that? I also wanna know the add filter row. What are we gonna add it, right? I wanna know what is this add filter row now what is the filter row it's gonna either be three or four right because I want our filter so we'll start that off at three right because that's where we're gonna place our filters after we complete if if we put enough filters in here we need to drop it down we need to add four so I'm gonna start it off at three and if it's bigger we're gonna go to four okay so we'll start it at three what about our add filter row in this case it's gonna start at seven and continue down so we need when we add a filter we need to do that put that on all of our filter details here in seven or eight as we fill up our filters. So we can do that. Now we have our set filter row, but let's put in our add filter row, filter row. Lots of variables here and lots of different ones, but we'll get through it. Equals, that's gonna be in B2. Why is that? B2 is gonna be zero. Remember, B2 is our max. So if, if I want seven and I, and I have none currently, all I need to do is add seven to that add seven to whatever is in b2 that way i can get seven which is going to be our first available row as soon as i add in one right this is going to change to one and then seven plus one is going to be eight so that's going to help us all we need to do is add seven to that so our add filter row is going to be equal to b2 let's put in b2 plus seven b2 plus seven okay so now we have that we'll call that our add filter row that's what we're going to add filter row okay now we just need to set the last filter shape name so we can do that if last filter number does not equal zero because that means there was none before that does not equal zero that means that means there was one before that then then last filter equals filter and last filter filter number and that's going to be the last filter shape name one of the last one okay so now we're ready to set the top position i want my filters to show all the way up here so we need to get the top position that's going to be based on what's in b1 that's the row so the top positions equal to dot range again we can use any any column a and whatever's in b1 which is the select set filter row the set filter row we've already defined it right up here Set filter row equals b1 okay so but that would the top position is going to be the top position of that so it's going to be top i've got to make sure we put the and sign in here too and the top position of that cell because that's what i want to know i just don't want to know the cell i want to know the top position of that so we'll call that the top position and also what I want to know I want to know remember again now that we have the top position set it's pretty easy but what about the left position it's going to be based on other filters right because I can't put the filters on top of each other I need to put them to the right of each other or below so let's set if the last filter number equals zero then we know it's going to be the first position our first one if it's our first one i'm going to put it right up here g in g column g that's going to be our left position column g so if our last filter number equals zero then we know our left position is equal to dot range g and then again we can use any row one dot left dot left but what if it's not else what if it's not our left position is going to be different left position is going to be equal to dot shapes our last filter whatever one the last one was used right last filter that's why we defined our last filter dot left so the left position of our last filter and i'll explain these things a little bit later on as as you we build it out dot left so it's left but i don't want the same position as left what do i mean by that let's just do a sample so we can see I'm gonna paste this here. Now let's say I have a filter here already, right? I need to paste another one, but I need to create another one. I'm gonna create it to the, I want to create it here, right? So 
I can't have two filters in the same position. So I need to know what is the position of this filter, what is the width of this filter here, and then I need to place it based on the current left, based on the width of this, and then add like 10 and then place another one here. So that's the idea. Find the position of the last filter, the last one, and then place it to the right, or in this case, possibly place it below. So that's what we're gonna focus on now. So the left position is equal to the left position plus the width, right? We just focus. So not only do I need the left position of this last filter, I also need the width of it because we're adding on to it. So it's going to be plus the width plus what? Plus, let's say, 10. Plus 10. Okay, so that's going to be it. That's it. Uh, also, I need to check one more thing. If the left position is greater than right I can't have them keep keep going left and left and left and left obviously I need to once it gets to about here I need to drop it down a row so let's check for that if the left position is more than M we need to drop it down a row so we can do that with this code here so if the left position is greater than dot range again we can use any row m1 dot left dot left then what do we want to do then what I want to do is drop it down a row. So then left position equals, again, dot range G1, right? So we're going to move it back over to the left, dot left, dot left, move it back over. And again, I guess I need to increase B1. Remember, what is B1? B1's our top position. Normally it starts in three, but it could be four, right? So I need to increase this. I need to increase this from three to four or four to five, theoretically, if we have that many filters, although we're not going to have that many filters because we can put about eight filters here. So that's pr pr plenty. Okay, so then I need to increase B1. So we can do that with this line of code here. Else dot left, if it's greater than, dot range b1 dot value equals b1 again b1 let's just copy paste that dot range b1 whatever it's currently value equals equals b1 plus one so we're incrementing at plus one we're going to increment increment filter row by one okay now what we do is reset the filter row so now that we've increased b1 we can set filter row is going to be equal to whatever's in b1 now that's going to reset the filter row and now what we do is reset the top position so the top position is equal to dot range again we can use any column a and the set filter row and that should be filter not filt Okay, so set filter row. So we're resetting the top position, dot top, right? So that's the top position, I want it to top. And then I don't want it right on top. In other words, I don't want it right on top of this. I want it a little bit, a few pixels down below. So we can probably add a little bit. So let's plus six. So I'm gonna add six pixels down, not so it's not hugging the top right away. So that basically is gonna adjust again. So all we've done is we've decided, as soon as our filters get beyond M, I'm gonna drop it down a row here and place our filters here. So I'm gonna have one set of filters here and then another set of filters here as our as we add filters so that's all we're doing just dropping down a row with those lines of code okay so we've determined the top position and base it on that so now we can end if now let's do we need one more and if here and if so we have multiple so we have the left position here and end if okay so let's bring up our code a little bit so we can see again let's review so if the last if it's a first left position the first filter we're ever setting we're putting it in g1 based on g1 else if it's not right then we need to adjust it based on whatever the last position was so we're going to keep moving it the first one's going to be here moving it over moving it over once we get beyond it we're going to drop it down and then move it over again so that's all we're doing with those lines of code just adjusting the left and top positions based on the current or prior okay great so we're done with that now let's continue on if the last filter number number does not equal zero then the then last filter equals again filter we need to reset filter and the last filter number and the last filter number okay and we've got that and so what does that do that's going to make sure that we have set the last filter name which is resetting it to make sure we have correct zero should be zero okay so now we're resetting all right what next i want to set up now we're ready now i'm ready to create our filter so the first thing i want to do is duplicate this 
and then set that and position it and put the name in. And then I'm going to duplicate this and set that. So we can do that with this line of code. Dot shapes sample filter dot duplicate. And then I want to set it a name. What is the name? It's going to be the filter name equals the filter name. And then I want what I'm then I'm ready to reset it. Now that we've created it, we can set the position and set the size. So we're going to do both of those. So with shapes filter name, what are we going to do? We're going to do a few things. First thing I want to set the text. So the dot actually should be dot shapes. There we go. First thing I want to do is set the text frame two we're going to focus on and then the text range and then the text what is the text of that filter it's going to be the filter text equals the filter text right that's the text that we've defined all the way up here right up here remember h2 i1 we're going to place all that filter text inside that shape filter text obviously okay so once we have that what i want to do i want to auto size it so dot text frame dot auto size and what that's going to do is automatically size it both horizontally both the width and the height but i really don't want i want to resize the width but i don't want to resize the height i want to keep the height pretty much the same so we're gonna to have to reset that so the auto size is going to be equal to true and then what i want to do is i want to set the width equals the width i want to increase it i want to why do i want to increase it not only do i want to set it so I want to add a little bit more space so it's it's increased it based on the text but I want to add a little bit more space because I want to put this inside the right space so I want to add additional width so we can do that with this line of code so dot width is equal to whatever the current dot width is plus perhaps 17 plus let's say 17 so that's going to increase the width a little bit so we have space for the close button on the right side and now what is the left dot left we've already set the left is going to be the left equals the left position that's set our left position and also when we need the top dot top is equal to the top position and i also want to assign a macro to it right when i click this filter i want these information to fill in here so we're going to assign a macro to that and we haven't built the macro yet but we're going to so dot on action equals we're going to call a macro called load we haven't created it yet but we will load filter that's the macro that i'm going to create and then dot visible i want to make sure it's equals mso true that's it that's all we have to do for our filter but we we've now created the filter so basically all we've done with that line of code is create the filter place it up here put in the text and that's about it that's all we've done here now what i want to do is i want to duplicate this here which is our actually i need to name that huh that should be sample clear thought i named that okay sample clear now i want to duplicate that sample clear and i want to assign it a name and then i'm going to place it right up in here and i'm going to bring it to the front that's what i'm going to do with the next lines of code so let's put that in right now so again we've already named it here we've already duplicated so now let's duplicate the sample clear the one we just named so we can do that here let's write some note duplicate clear button so to dot shapes sample clear that's the one we just named sample clear dot duplicate dot name again we're giving it a name in this case i'm going to give it a clear name equals the clear name we've already defined the clear name up here what is the clear name it is the clear and then the filter number okay so we've assigned that that's going to create clear button and again all we have to do is again place this as well but this is a little bit easier because we've already placed it so with dot shapes in this case clear name that's the name we just created what are we going to do with that i'm going to set a specific width and a specific height just to make sure even though it should be correct already dot width equals again 17. i want to make sure the height is exactly the same equals 17 so that's going to set the width and the height and i want to set the left position the left position is equal to again we just focus on the left position right it's going to be this left position right here plus the width of this 
right? Minus a bit, minus a bit, minus uh, 17 again. So left position is equal to sheet one. I need to call out the sheet because I'm focused, I'm inside a width shape. So I'm already inside this. So I need to call out the sheet. Sheet one dot shapes filter name. That's the filter we just created up here. Remember, we're placing it on this filter here. We're placing it based on this filter name. So that's the one. So filter name dot width, the width of that minus 17 right because we don't want it after i want it inside inside that so dot left minus 17. and what about the top position we're gonna have the same exact top position as we placed before so the top position is going to be the top position equals top position we've already set the top position and again i also want to assign a macro to the to the clear button that's going to be a different macro dot on action is going to be equal to remove filter and then dot visible equals so true. That's all we have to do with our clear button. That's going to place it. All right. So now what I want to do, now we've got our filter added up here. We've got our shape and we've got our clothes, but I want to add those filter details. I want to know what we've added. I want to put all those details right here into our filter row. So we know the filter number, the field, that should be field, the type and the value. So how do we do that? We do that with just a few lines of code right here. So Let's put some notes in here. Add filter details. And the first thing is with, you know, column A dot range. A, and we've already set our add filter row and add filter row. We've already defined the row. What are we putting there? I'm going to put the filter number equals the filter number. I want to keep track of what filter number we're on, the filter number. number okay so what about that now that's good what about in b i want to put something in b i want to put whatever is in h2 so we're going to put in b here whatever is in dot range h2 and of course that is going to be our filter by filter by all right what else we've got more let's just copy this bring it down and then in column c we are going to place our filter type and that's going to come from i2 so i2 is going to be our filter type filter type and then one more also we need to have our filter value filter value and that's going to go in column d and it's going to come from j2 as you can imagine okay so we've got a b c and d all of our columns filled out we're going to keep track of it now what we're going to do is now we need to set our criteria so now we've created our filter but we've put our filter here we've put our information here but we haven't created our, i want to take the criteria and i want to put it inside here right in here now keep in mind this is column 14 here so basically the first column our first criteria is going to be placed here our second criteria our second filter is going to be placed here our third here so as we add filters the criteria are going to be placed here so if it's a date criteria we're going to put in the word date here and then i'm going to put in the actual date of that criteria here based on this and what is our criteria going to be it's going to be based on like this but the value this word value is going to be replaced with the actual value that they've placed here so i'm going to show you exactly how we do that it's really relatively simple so let's do that right now so we're going to put some notes here called set filter criteria and we're going to that's going to focus on sheet two sheet two dot cells we're using cells because both our row and our column is dynamic so what is our row we know our row why do i know our row because our row the first thing we're going to do is put that header right here in row two we just don't know the column if it's our first data we're going to put it in column 15 if our second and column 16. so we can do that we just need to add so how do we do that well with this line of code sheet two we know the row but what is the column the column is going to be essentially the filter number plus 14. so if it's the first filter it's going to end up in column 15. all right and what are we going to place there dot value equals dot range again h2 is going to be there h2 that is our header value right that's the header company or whatever it is add filter by field next up all we need to do is the value so again this time it's going to be in row three so we can copy this pretty much this is going to be the only difference is going to be in this in, in this case our criteria is going to go in row three so our criteria but what is our 
again, all we need to do here, we know we know that uh, we've already defined this. We've defined that inside. D3 is going to be our filter detail, but remember, we have to take value, take it out, and replace it whatever they've put in J2. So we can do that using the replace statement. So it's going to be equals replace dot range D3, whatever's in D3, and what is our find? What are we looking for? I'm looking for value. So I'm going to place the brackets value. I'm looking for this, wherever value is, and I'm going to replace that. What am I replacing it with? With whatever's in J2, dot range J2. So that's the full replace. So we're just replacing value with whatever they've entered. Okay, good. So now we have our criteria done and we're almost done with this. All I need to do is once we've added a filter, I just want to clear, I'm going to clear this out. H2, J2, we've already added it so we can clear out H2 through J2. So let's do that. Dot range H2 through J2 dot clear contents. Okay, then I want to run a macro. I'm going to create a brand new macro and we're going to call it advanced filter. That's going to run our filter. Why are we doing that? Not Why are we not writing our advanced filter here? We're not writing it because our advanced filter is going to be used for multiple. We're going to use it for update and we're going to use it for add new. So that's why I'm going to run run advanced filter. That's going to be a macro. This is going to be run advanced filter and add and add results. Okay, great, that's it. So of course we cannot forget, we gotta make sure we create a macro, sub run advanced filter. That's obviously important because we need to add that. So, so let's do that right now. And that's just actually a very simple macro. So it's just not too many lines of code with sheet one. That's what we're focused on. I also want to know the filter number, the last filter number. We need to focus on that. So the last filter number is going to be in B3 minus 1, so, or otherwise known as or B2. So let's just focus on B3. That's going to be the last one entered. I want to know the last one so we take care of all of those filters. So filter number equals B3 minus 1, which is the last filter number. So let's write that in right now. So we'll set the filter number. Filter number equals equals dot range b3 value b3 dot value and of course that's going to be our last filter number okay again what i want to do i also want to make sure we clear all the existing data anytime we run a filter we're going to clear g7 all the way through n and down we need to just clear any results that are there so we can rerun our filter so dot range g7 through and and then we'll just use a large number nine 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 dot clear the content clear content contents clear any old results okay because we're going to bring a brand new filter and now we're ready to run our advanced run our advanced filter and what is that advanced filter first of all we want to know the last data row last data row is going to be equal to sheet two. That's where our data is located. Dot range a, and then just use large number nine 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 dot end Excel up dot row. That's going to get us our last last data row. We just need to make a check to run that there actually is data there. So we can do if last data row is less than four. That would mean there's no data then go to no data okay and just drop that no data data okay so just in case there's no data we need that caveat there okay so assuming that there is data we can move on we can now run our advanced filter so what is our advanced filter again let's just go over it real quick it's going to be based on the data i'm going to use this all starting here in column in row in row three all the way over to h running it down to our last one our criteria is going to be whatever based on our last filter row that's why we need the last row for example if our last filter if we have two filters running if i have two let's say i have two different filters running i know that our, these last two filters if it's here that's going to help me know that there's just two columns to run here our criteria is just two columns i need to know the number of columns based on the number of criteria then we're going to put the results all the way in here i'm going to take those results whatever's here and i'm going to bring them back over here so let's just write some code to do that right now so sheet two dot range a three that's our row must include the headers through h 
and our last data row dot advanced filter we're going to copy them to another location and then of course we want the criteria equal to equal to range sheet two dot cells we know it's going to start off in row two right because that's our header for our criteria and we know it's going to start in 15 15 is our first column so we know the starting point but what's the ending point sheet two dot cells we know it's also row three is our ending row but our column is variable again this one's going to be filter number plus 14 plus 14. why is that let me show you and then we got a copy let's finish this out first copy to range equal to sheet to dot range a a two through a h two and then unique equals true unique equals true uh false put false i think false let me just check this to make sure it's accurate it's a long line sheet two range a three this is our advanced our original data here we're running an advanced filter we're going to copy that our criteria range is going to be a range right our criteria range it's going to start out in row two column 15 that's our first cell of our range and our second cell or our last cell i should say is in row three the filter number plus 14. let me just go over that why would it be filter number plus 14. so let's say we have two rows let's say we have two filters that we're currently focused on so that means if 14 is our if 15 if we have one 15 if 16 would be column 16. so our first again our first is 15 row 2 column 15 our last is row 3 column 16. so that's how we would get two different criteria but we've already placed our information here remember in the last macro so that's how we run our advanced filter and then the results again are going to go through aa2 all the way through ah2 and then our results are going to come down here now that we've run our advanced filter we just need to check on the results of that so let's see our in our last row so let's get our last row our last result row is going to be equal to we'll use column aa sheet two call range a A and then nine 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 dot and dot XL up dot row. Okay, so we have last row. We just need to check for results. So if the last result row is less than three, that means there's no data. Then go to no data. Okay, so now we have go now we've got it running so we know that there's actual data we can continue on all i need to do is just copy over the information now i need to take the results whatever is here and just bring them over into our filters starting in c now remember this starts in row seven this starts in row three so we're going to need to add four onto that so we can do that with this line of code right here dot range g7 that's our first through and and the last result row plus four dot value equals again on our sheet to our result two dot range a a three through a h and the last result row dot value we just call this copy over results that's it now we'll fix our bugs because i'm sure there's a lot of them because i type fast okay so we've got that now we've got to run our advanced filter i'm going to save our work should have done that a lot longer ago okay all right so we've got add filter and let's just uh take a look in here and let's add some information here filters okay company name does not equal let's just take a look let's just put a company name equals a and now what we're going to do is i'm going to assign the macro to the one we just created right click assign the macro add filter okay and then let's just check and, and fix any bugs that we have variable not defined last filter number this should be i think filt sometimes i forget these variables okay again argument not found copy to not quite there we go that looks better continue on all right also fix this issue this should be three remember our header is in row two our criteria is in row three so we got that fixed 
All right, good, 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 good. Wow, there we go. This is too big. We need to set the height, reset the height of this. Notice it was a um, variable, so we just need to reset the height down because it changes. Not only is it dynamic in width, it's dynamic in height, so we need to set the reset the height. So let's do that right now. What we want to do is we want to set the height also. That's our, that's our cl clear, which is correct, but I also want to do the same thing here. So reset the height also to 17 on that and let's close that out and notice our close button didn't get hit I think we need to make that visible okay so let's do that again let's add it again and see make the adjustments as we need them does not equal let's just make this contains and let's just say a so we can get some and add the filter okay company name equals a I need to drop this down I don't want to write on top I want to drop this down the top position should be adding six right the top position should be plus six that's going to drop it down a little bit. That's what I want. And again, the top position, or we can just change the top position right up here. Should be plus six, plus six. We can change it here because I don't. We don't necessarily need to change it here or here as long as we've changed the original. Okay, that looks better. All right, let's take a look at that. Let's see how we're doing. Our left position is getting created. It's not our left position of our clear is not correct. So we want to clear that out. We want to make sure there's probably a variable let me fix that all right yeah obviously this should be plus not equals okay so that looks good all right i think we're getting a lot closer to getting our filters updated let's just uh we don't have that macro available yet so no problem going to cut that out and then we'll just clear this also out i'm going to clear the filters out and we'll center this here and we'll soon it's going to be used delete that all right let's do another let's try this again uh first name let's try something contains so let's just say a and then add the filter all right now we're looking better now i got that now it looks that's exactly how i want it i want that filter perfect and our information's here our value our contains and let's add another filter all right now let's just check um started on let's just say is on or after okay six six Okay, and we'll add that filter. All right, that's exactly what I want. Excellent. Now let's focus on the clear filter. What I want to do is I want to clear all the filters there. So we're going to write macros to do that. And I also want to select this and update the filter. So we'll write both of those, update and clear, and then we're going to be done. All right, so let's go in here and focus on update fixture. So sub update filter and that's what I want to do when I select something I want to update the filter that's just a little bit of a code not too much so let's write that again with sheet one also again I want to make sure that just like we did up here and add I want to make sure that all the fields are required so if not let them know so we can copy and paste that down here if for some reason any of those fields are empty exit out of the sub Okay, I want to get the filter number, the filter row, and the filter text, just like I did up here. Filter number, filter row, filter text. I want to define all these just as I did with add filter and bring them right down here. Filter number, filter row, filter text. That's going to be, we don't need the clear name because that's already set up. We don't need that because that's, that's not going to change. So filter number, filter name, filter text, good have all that and then again with shape filter number we're going to set it up let's continue on with dot shapes filter and filter number again we want to update the text dot text text frame two right dot text range dot text I want to update that just because we right if they've made a change we want to make sure we update that dot text equals filter text so we want to update that based on any changes they might have made and drop this down here and then dot top what is the top position top is going to be equal to sheet one dot range again a and we're focused on b1 remember dot range b1 is going to locate that row that is our row that keeps track of where our filter should go dot top plus six we don't want it exactly on the top plus six going to drop down six pixels dot width focus on that equals dot width plus six just going to add a little bit of there on top of that dot width just a little bit more than the current to make sure it encompasses all the text and then we want to reset the height dot height 
equal to make sure because every time we change that it's automated so dot height equals 17 want to make that height fixed that's all we're going to be doing when we update that filter update that filter and then of course we're going to need once we update that click the update button we also want to do the same with the clear button so what do i want to do with the clear button i want to make sure that's in the correct position so with dot shapes clear and the filter number and then also want to set the left position dot left again it's going to be equal also based on the above shape dot left is going to be equal sheet one dot shapes based on the filter name above so we can filter we can just do filter name obviously we can update this we don't need we can do that because we've already defined the filter name so again filter name here set that based on the filter name easier because we've already defined it already defined it up here. name since we've already defined it here so it's going to be based on that filter name dot left plus the width of it right plus the width not only the left position but plus the width so copy that paste it in but change that of course to dot width and then also minus 17 minus 17 just so we did okay and then i also want to make sure the z order dot z order i want to make sure that that clear button is always on top so the best way to do that is just to mso bring to front that's going to bring that clear button all the way on top so that's all we need to do with the clear button so the left position and the z orders all we need to do to make sure nothing nothing else is going to change with that okay so that's what we have and now what we want to do is we're going to add the filter details again just like we did before so let's up here all we need to do here of course we're not going to change the filter number that's not going to change so it's just going to be b c and d and then also what i want to do is i probably want to set the format of that too kind of forgot that that's okay it's not that important but basically i want to set the format of this d why do i want to do that basically what i want to do is i want to set the format here in case it's not a date format or number i'm going to set the format too and the format we know is going to be based on whatever we've selected here in the filter format here in d so we can do that with this line of code so again in this case d we're going to set the format the dot number format is equal to whatever's in d2 dot range d2 d2 dot value set format and i can copy this we're going to do the same thing here same thing here right above on the add filter we can do that too set the format here all right great so now we set the format that's going to be nice now we're going to update the format so now we've got all the information here now we're ready to update the criteria so update is on sheet two up update filter criteria on sheet two which is our data sheet so how do we do that sheet two dot cells two remember we're focused on in this case row two in this case row two and then what is the column the column is going to be the filter number plus 14 dot value that's going to be the header right what is it again it's we're going to be focused on just whatever's in h2 equals dot range h2 that's just the header so it's pretty easy header and then next up we want to do the value what is the value just in case we've made an update so again this is going to be the only difference is row three of sheet two row three here row three that's what we're going to focus but now again we're going to do the same thing it's just going to be that replace all we do need to do is copy up here we've already done it up here basically right here that's all we're going to be doing same thing we've done down here same thing right here equals just going to be replacing whatever is in d3 based on what the value and the value that they've created so that's all we need to do and again all we also need to do is just the same thing clear out the existing just as we did and then run the advanced filter and then update the button set is all we need to do here so again put the run the advanced filter and then just i'm going to update the button set i want to make sure that we've updated it after we've updated the filter we want to make sure the add filter button is equal to true and the update is hidden so dot shapes add filter button dot dot visible equals mso true 
show show add filter button and then I'm gonna hide the update button dot shapes update filter button dot visible equals MSO false so we're gonna hide that hide the update button okay good so we've got that work and we're gonna be able to update it now we've run our advanced filter that's it we've already had the advanced filter Excellent, but how do I get one more thing I need to do is I want to load, right? What do I mean by that? I want to, if I click on this, I want to load the information here. I want to take this information here. I want to load it inside here so that we can make that update. So how do we do that? Well, it's just with one little macro. So let's write that macro now and then we're going to be done for the most part. Sub update filter. That's going to be the macro that we loaded. So let's just write that. It's just a few lines of code with sheet one and then the filter number we always want to know the filter number that we're on is going to be equal to how do we know the filter number what do we what is the application called we've given this a name right filter one so in order to know the number of that all i need to do is remove the word filter and i automatically have i know the filter that we've selected based on the caller so notice this is filter two and this is filter one so i want to extract the number all i need to do is remove the word filter from the application caller so how do we do that filter number equals replace application application caller is the name of the shape that called it application dot caller and then what are we going to be replacing on replacing the word filter with nothing that's going to that's going to leave only the number now that we have that we can it's very very simple once we have it, we know it so dot range b4 i can set b4 to be equal to our filter number equals the filter number so what does that mean? I'm just gonna put whatever filter number that we've selected, selected filter number, I'm gonna put that right in B4. So that's all we're doing there. Set the sel selected filter number. Helps us keep track of it. Now that we have that in B4, now what I wanna do is I wanna take basically whatever is here in the row here and put it in here. Whatever is in here and put it here and whatever's here and put it here. That's all I need to do is just those three lines of code. So we can do that with dot range h2 a value is going to be equal to dot dot range b and the filter number plus six dot value so that's going to be about our filter number is going to be let's say one so that means it's going to be row seven which is our first position so that's going to be our filter field what else do i have to do dot i2 right i2 we can just copy this and then make the adjustments accordingly in this case i2 is going to be equal to coming from column c and that is going to be our filter type and the last one would be our value filter value and that is going to be going into j2 and it's going to be coming from column d there we go so now we've got that. Let's line these up accordingly. So we've got all of our information back into our list. What else do we need to do? I need to take J2 and set the format. Now what you want to do is I want to set the format. I want to set this format and I want to set this format, at least J2, J2 to set the format. So why don't we do that? Let's update the format dot range J2 dot dot number format equals dot range d2 is located d2 is where our formats located d2 value that's going to set our number format for d2 just in case it gets changed every time right it's going to be changed so we want to change it based on whatever if it's a date or a number or text we want to change that number format now i also want to set b1 dot range b1 dot value i want to know b1 i want to know i want to set that row there make sure that top left cell row i want to know what row did it come from four or did it come from three i want to know what row it came from so that i know where to place it back again okay so we can do that with this line of code dot run b value equals dot shapes application dot caller and what I want to know is the top left cell, top left cell, where did it come of the row? What is the row where it came from? I want to place that row right there. Okay, 
Next up, I want to then hide the add filter button and show. So these two buttons are going to be reversed. So these, this time we're going to be updating it. So the add filter is going to be false. We're going to hide the add filter and I'm going to show the update button. Show. Okay, that's pretty much it. That's all I need to do with the update. Now we've already, remember, every time we add a new button, we assign the macro update filter, right? So if we look here, you see this is our add filter. We've assigned the macro called load filter. Great, okay, we just need to rename this, not update. This is be load filter, right? That's the load filter. So, all right, now that we've loaded, so this is what happens, load filter. This is the macro that's run every time. Remember, when we add a brand new button, add a filter, we create a shape, and this is the macro that gets assigned, load filter. So now that we click on that, every time we click you see we just clicked on that because the macro was already signed it loads it but what if i load this one perfect that's exactly what i want now when we click on it what about if i close this we have to assign remove now all we need to do is add one more macro called remove filter very very simple so let's do that right now let's just scroll down loading filter works great we can click on the update filter let's check that update filter right click on this button assign the macro and click update filter click ok so let's just check to see if there's any errors fix this name filter name filter 3 that's obviously all right this should be b4 right we need to make sure that's updated b4 handles our updated filter so let's reset that b4 right that's selected filter 2 that's the one we want so click update and again when we're inside the width we always want to add the sheet name sometimes i forget sheet 1 we're focused on that because we have to we're inside the sheet name let's run that okay and then the difference hidden here these are this is just filter row. We're not adding the filter row. I copy that over. So we don't need that filter row. And then the filter row. It's just the filter row, right? We define the filter row. Let's define that. Filter row is going to be equal to the filter number plus six plus six. That's going to be our selected filter row. All right, good. That looks good. Now we're making progress. Perfect. Okay, good. No more issues there. All right, and then good. All right, let's just change this to a date and then we'll click update. Let's try January 1st and click update the filter. All right, now it includes those dates. That's what I want. So we select on a filter and let's click update filter and then we want to add. Let's add a brand new filter. We'll add, let's just say last name contains and then we'll just do D U N, should only return one. Add that filter. Good, that's what we want. When we remove that filter, we still have to assign, create a macro to remove that filter. So let's create the macro called remove filter right now. Okay, let's scroll down here and then we'll call it sub remove filter. And that's just a little bit of a macro. So we'll let's go ahead and write that right now with sheet one. Filter number, of course, is going to be equal to the application color again. So we do that same thing here, right? No difference. The filter number is going to be just right here. All we do is copy this because it's going to be the same. We want to assign the filter number to the application color, right? That's going to get us our filter number because I want to know which one when we caught it. But this time it's going to be not filter, but it's going to be clear, right? Because that's the one that's going to be removing the filter number. And we're going to one of the dot shapes application because we're clearing dot caller that's the name dot delete because I'm gonna delete the clear button dot delete right we can delete it delete clear button we don't need that filter we're removing it what else I want to know the shape the filter shape we can remove that too I want to remove these two shapes when I close it I want to remove this shape here and I want to remove this shape here so one is the filter three and one is the clear three so I want to remove both of those so the next line of code dot shapes clear and the filter number and the filter number dot delete now it's going to delete that we don't need that delete filter shape okay so now that both of those shapes are gone we want to clear out dot range a right we clear out and the filter number plus six all the way through and colon D and again the filter number plus six dot clear contents and what's that going to do it's going to clear the filter details 
inside that, we're gonna clear those filter details, right? Here, all the way, when we're clearing the filter, I wanna clear all this information, all the way from A to D. We know the filter, if the filter number is one, it's gonna be one plus six, right? So it's seven. So we're just gonna clear out these, All that's all I need to do. So that's done, so we've now cleared out the filter details. What else do I need to do? Well, I need to also update sheet two and clear it out there as well. So how can we do that? Sheet two dot cells two right row two column what is the column 14 plus the filter number i'm going to clear that out dot clear contents clear criteria header once we clear the criteria header we also need to clear the criteria itself and that's going to be in simple same thing but in this case it's going to be row three clear criteria value Okay, so now we've cleared up both of those in the data. Now we're ready to run our advanced filter. Again, we can just run this macro right here, all the way up here. Copy this advanced filter and run the macro one more time. So there we go. That'll run our advanced filter. So once we're, let's put some notes on that. Run advanced filter, all that's pretty clear. Okay, next up, I wanna update the button set here this button set once we've cleared it out i want to make sure that the update button is visible and the add is hidden so we can do that with this line of code right here actually what we want to do is we want the add to be visible once we remove them and we'll make sure that uh, the uh, hidden that the update is invisible so that's all we need to do with that code all right let's take a look at that once we remove the filter we'll clean this up a little bit and now let's go back into the remove filter. The macro's already been assigned. So let's say I want to remove this, close that out, debug that. We just need to do the filter. Obviously, we've done, we've already removed the clear. So this is the filter. I want to do that filter, right? And that's the one we want to delete. Okay, that looks good. Now we're done. So we now we, I also really want to clear out these. Once we've removed it, I want to make sure that's clear too. H2 through J2. We should also clear that out too. So Again, we've, we've cleared it up here. All I want to do is copy this and just remove any details that were inside that filter as well. Okay, so good, I like that. Now let's clear out this filter. That looks good too. And now let's clear out this filter. Okay, but once we clear that filter, I want to make sure that update button is hidden. I want to make sure the add new, that's important. Once we clear out, let me make sure that. So go back into down here. Again, the add filter should be, this is not, this is not wrong update right update should be this should be c true we want to show the ad and we want to hide the update button once we delete it so let's just we've got those reverse false details all right okay that's what i want here let's just comment that out okay good so when we remove a filter let's add it and try it again so now let's go ahead and uh, so i don't want update right so all right very good. All right, let's just comment this out, run that macro just so we can update the shapes accordingly, and then we'll uncomment this out. That will that will get us our ad filter, which is really what I want. So now let's try it. Total sales uh, is greater than, let's just say 1500, because I want to add as a brand new filter. Adding a filter, good. So when I remove this filter, we want the ad to be displayed. That's really what I want. Let's line these up accordingly. Align them in the middle and then bring them up a little bit. Okay, good, that's what I wanna see. So let's add multiple filters, and we have just one more macro to write, very, very simple, and that is going to be the clear filters. I wanna clear them all, does not equal, let's just say, um, uh, Zor Zorita. So we wanna add a filter, any name that does not equal Zorita. Perfect, that one's gone. Okay, let's add another filter. Let's say last name is going to be, does not equal, and then let's say last name contains, and then just do A-N. Let's just do A-N so we can get multiple, and then add that filter. All right, that looks good. All of them contain, last name contains the word A-N. I like that, this is a really nice. All we have to do is run one more, which is the clear filter. So let's get that done right now, and then I'll let you go after this extended training. Let's move on. So, sub clear filters. All we need to do again is sheet two, we're focused on the data, dot range, O2. I'm gonna clear out all the criteria for sure. We don't need that O2 two through v three dot clear content so what is that contents 
Okay, so basically what I want to do is I want to clear out any criteria on the data sheet. And that's going to be started here. O2 all the way through V. Just want to clear anything out there. Notice that our criteria has been here. Criteria clearing all those out. So we do that. That clears out all our criteria. Now I want to know the last data row. Again, we've already defined that up here. Let's just update that on our advanced filter because we have that here. I want to clear, just bring it all over. So in our advanced, run our advanced filter, we have our last data row. It's going to be the same as this. So we can just copy this, place that right down here. Now we have our last data row. We can focus on with sheet one, with sheet one. First thing I want to do is determine the last filter row because I need to loop through those. The last filter row is going to be equal to dot range what's in B3. That plus 5. Why is that important? Plus 5. Why is that important? Because I need to loop through all of these filters and I need to clear any of them out. So if I know, or in this case, our last filter row is 8, right? So our next filter is B3. So if we add 3, 8 is what I'm focused on. I want 8. I want to know that last row. I need to go from 7 to 8. I need to clear everything out. And I need to clear all these items out. Clear everything out, all of our filters. So we can do that. We just, this is our last filter row we have that set up once we have our last filter row if the last filter row is equal to six then go to no filters and then just put no filters down here okay so we have that set just in case there are no filters then we can run a loop for filter row is going to be equal to seven to the last filter row we're going to create a loop next filter row close our loop so what are we going to do inside this loop first i want to set the filter number i want to know what filter number that's located in column a filter number is equal to whatever's in dot range a remember a holds that filter number and the filter row that is going to be our filter number filter number we need that filter number so that we can remove any of the shapes that we have associated with that filter so we can do that with this we have on, I'm going to write on air resume next because in, just in case those for some reason the user has deleted them or they're not here, we don't want it to bug out. So dot shapes filter and the filter number dot delete, deleting that one and also the cleared. So again, we're going to do the same thing with clear, we're just going to change the text to clear. So we can copy this, paste that in there, and then just use the word clear. So we're going to clear out the button. So we need that. Once we have that, we can do on air go to zero on air go to zero that's gonna just in case there were any missing buttons that'll help and then we can do the next filter row so that's our loop that's gonna clear out everything we needed once we've done once we've cleared out every single clear shape or every single filter shape we can then clear any the existing data so now I can take this and I can just basically all the way from a7 all the way to D and down clear all the filters out right away so we can do that with this dot range a7 through n. Why do we want n? In fact, I can actually I can clear all this all the way over to n. Clear everything out. So we can use the n. Clear it all out. We can go all the way to column n. N. In this case, a large row. Nine 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 nine. Dot clear contents. Going to clear all the values. I'm going to clear all of our filters and our value. Clear existing data. Okay, next up, what do I want to do? I want to just copy over all the data. Now I know the last row of the data, so all I'm going to do is take this last row of all of our original data and bring it all the way over into our filters right here and bring it all the way back into our into our results here. But as we're going to start out with the source data because there's no criteria, there's no results, we can use the source data. So we can do that with this line of code. Dot range G7, that's our starting point, through n and the last data row plus three remember why are we adding three because our results start on seven and our original data starts on four so we must add value equals sheet two our original data dot range where's our original data located in a four through h and the last data row dot value this is going to copy over all original data okay so once we have all original data come i want to clear whatever's in h2 again i want to go through this and clear out anything and i want to update the button set we can just copy that over 
and button that. So we want to make sure the add is visible. We want to up hide the update, which is correct, and clear out those. Okay, so now that we've done that, that's pretty much it. Let's just check our code here, save our work always, right click, this is a little bit too high here, bring that down a little bit, right click the group itself and assign the macro, assign macro, and then we're gonna call this clear filters. Okay, so let's see how we do, clear the filter, fix this last filter row, filter, okay, that's better, and then the filter number again, B and then B, adding the Bs on, continue on. Okay, that looks good. Now we've got it up. Perfect, look at that. That's good. All right, let's just take a look at things here. And we'll add in the company name. Let's just say contains the word A, add that filter in, and then we can add in a total sales of, let's say, greater than $1,000, and then add that filter, and let's go ahead and take a look and we can add a started on, adding maybe is on or after. We can put, uh, let's say six, one, add that filter in, that's gonna filter in, good. Add an additional filter, let's put in even more filters. Let's say a country, and I want a country that uh, contains, let's say the word letter A and add that filter in. Wow, we're doing really good. Let's even add an additional country filter in. Let's go down to the bottom row. And now I only want to filter on countries for the United States. So I want to be equals United States and add that filter in and put it to the bottom row. Perfect. Now we've got an amazing filter. Thanks for sticking with me on this long training. If you like these workbooks, please subscribe. And don't forget to pick up 150 workbooks for just $56. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next week.